Hi everyone, this is Scott McLeod and I am talking with schools about their responses to the coronavirus. Today I'm fortunate to have with me Art Fessler, Superintendent of Community Consolidated School District 59 in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Uh, Art, thanks for joining me. Uh, let's start with just the basics, you know. Uh, how long have you all uh, been responding to the quarantine and what have you all been up to so far? Uh, hey, Scott, thanks uh, for having me this afternoon. It's uh, great to see you and always great to connect with you. So thank you. Um, you know, I'd like to start with by saying that I'm fortunate that I have just an amazing team. So um, as, as soon as as soon as word um, and even some of the, the, the pending warnings um, came into play, we, we went on the offensive and started planning right away. So uh, we're a school district of 15 schools. We have about um, 7,000 students, and 60% of our families um, live below the poverty line or qualify for free and reduced lunch. So um, first and foremost, we tried to get a, a structure in place that would really help us to respond and to react to the most important areas. So we kind of, from the start, classified three areas of focus. So it was feeding and supporting our students, um, trying to find some, um, continuity in instruction for our students and then uh, communication and I think communication was one of the the key elements early on that we used all the resources we had um, you know all of our social media platforms um, flyers pretty much everything we could think of to try to get the word out in terms of how we were planning to support our families so um, you know so uh, as soon as the, our schools in Illinois um, went into closure, so the governor um, actually utilized uh, active God days to shut our schools down for a couple of weeks. As soon as that happened, uh, we mobilized and, and uh, got some communications in place. And you know, the most important piece following just uh, having a clear plan is to making sure that we were um, really identifying and supporting our students and their families. So. We mobilized our transportation company, um, our food service. Uh, they were amazing. They, they've continued to go above and beyond uh, doing anything they can to help support our students, our families, and our teachers. So our, what is uh, feeding, would you say 5,000 students or so? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're feeding about, we're, we're pushing out um, somewhere around, <clears throat> you know, seven, 8,000 meals a day, week one. Um, and that would be breakfast and lunch. So uh, the first week we actually partnered with our transportation company and our food company and we ran our bus routes. So we told families basically to plan on three hours later than your initial pickup and meet us at those places. And then uh, we'll provide lunch for that day and breakfast for the next day. Well, um, you know, in order to do that, though, it required a lot of people at our district office to sort food, to sort routes, to, to line up tubs of food, and then to pack them on the buses and to go. So for the first week, um, as the quarantine got um, really more significant and uh, the order was to have no more than 10 essential congregate, we had to quickly change, you know, our approach. So we went to just dropping off at sites, um, and that worked out a little better. So feeding, five, feeding you know, four to 5,000 kids has been a challenge um, because you know, roughly uh, 20 to 30% of the families of those children um, don't have email addresses or, or we don't have access to those. So again, communication right. um, has been tough. So we did find that every day uh, we significantly almost doubled the number of meals that were served. And I think that was largely word of mouth um, throughout the community as well. Got it, okay. So you think about, you know, the first, what, how long has it been for you now, a couple weeks? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, so what seems to be working well right now? Um, you know, again, I think the fact that we focused on three areas, um, as I indicated earlier, um, has really helped us to um, just talk about those areas and get better every day. So um, at the end of every day, you know, we meet as a small leadership team, um, part, uh, many of us are on site, so five or six of us, and then we have a few people zooming in. Um, so we just kind of reflect on what worked, what didn't work, and then try to make things better for the next day, and then talk about uh, future planning. So again, having a focus um, has really, really helped. 
This week we're also off on spring break. So that has helped somewhat in terms of, um, you know, experimenting with some continuity of learning. So our staff have been amazing and just trying different platforms, um, you know, to connect with kids on a regular basis. I, I see our administrative teams pushing out tweets to their, uh, to their students and they're being very creative because they're, you know, they're working from home. Um, they're not, we don't have people uh, in our offices, um, you know, in terms of, our structure right now, we would have, you know, one of the, the building custodians, we have IT over at our district office, and then we have um, our admin doing some amount of limited time uh, at, at sites, um, just in case people show up. But uh, again, it's only, you know, one or two or three people at a building. So, you know, again, I think just staying focused on what's most important and try to plan around that uh, systematically. Right. So where are the big challenges right now? So either currently or in the near future, where do you think are going to be the next sticking points? For you? Um, you know, we're, we are very encouraged that our food source seems to be good. But, um, you know, on the other hand, we're hoping that uh, man and woman power um, continue to be strong. You know, we've lost, again, um, you know, our, our governor last week indicated that it's essential staff only. You know, otherwise people should be working at home. So being able to maintain essential staff, keeping people you know, healthy and, and some able bodies, especially for our food service group and for our transportation to make sure that we're getting our meals mm -hmm. uh, where they need to go. That's probably first and fo foremost important. And that's our biggest concern just to make sure that it happens. Um, you know, we, I don't see this ending anytime soon. You know, our, our latest uh, stay or school closure is you know, early April, April 7th. Um, I would be frank, I would be surprised if if it doesn't go through April, and many people are speculating that it could last the remainder of the school year. So, if that happens, we fully expect to provide food service throughout the remainder of what would have been the school year, and also we'd like to um, push it into the summer. I have an amazing school board who's really supportive, um, you know, very caring, and I'm assuming that they'll be willing to you know, pick up additional costs necessary to take care of our families and students. Got it. So Art, we haven't talked much about the learning side of things yet. So what are your goals here over the next few weeks in that area? So interestingly, in Illinois, um, during an act of God day, you cannot uh, introduce new learning. So it's, enri it's enrichment based. So um, our, our state board of education, legislatures, and and our teacher associations are trying to come up with a different definition than Act of God days. So um, I know that they're working hard to get that done in the very near future so that we can move beyond enrichment and start working on introduction of new instruction. So, you know, we've been a school district and, and you're partially responsible for some of this, Scott, who's really tried to allow for a lot of instructional cho choice, a lot of agency, student choice. So, um, you know, we have never you know, adopted a, a whole scale learning management system. Now we use uh, Google Classroom um, really effectively. Um, we do a lot of stuff in Google in cloud-based domain, but we also have a lot of other apps that we're using that have some other features that Google may not have in terms of, you know, sharing work uh, sure. with, with parents and so forth. So at this point now, <clears throat> we're trying to take a step back and and we've sent out some surveys to see what our staff are using, what's most effective. And we're going to try to work with our, our, leader, our union leadership and our teachers to have two or three choices for platforms and provide more consistency um, with, our, with our teachers. And that'll help support parents, especially if parents have two or three kids in our system. So that's, that's one of the big challenges that we're working on right now and hope to resolve by the end of the week. Um, but in terms of, of instruction, a lot of, a lot of um, digital, um, you know, we have a one-to-one -one solution for our, for our entire school. We have some two-to-one devices out there as well. So our teachers and students are used to work in a, working in a cloud-based domain. So our teachers are pushing out a lot of things to our students. I'm seeing a lot of uh, connections on different types of, of social medium. Um, you know, it sometimes can be a little more challenging for elementary school districts when you have age restrictions. So like Zoom, we're not allowed to use Zoom um, with our students because they're not 18, but we're finding other platforms, um, Padlet and so forth, that, are, that allow some level of flexibility for us to, to do that. 
Um, and then I've appreciated, we've done a couple of challenges like this week, we've got uh, hashtag D59 learns and, and we've challenged kids to take some selfies and share them to that hashtag. So, um, you know, it's a very serious and challenging time, but at the, at the same time, we wanna still try to generate some energy and momentum around learning. Uh, moving forward to next week, uh, we're moving to conversations that, that will provide more opportunity for our staff to have uh, virtual staff meetings mm -hmm. using some type of platform, most likely Zoom, and then uh, virtual instructional meetings. We've talked a lot about the staff meetings being more about the adult social emotional learning. So sharing celebrations, sharing what's working, sharing some of the challenges, but also, you know, building culture and climate, you know, among our staff who have been removed from their jobs, um, on-site jobs. And, you know, we've got a lot of very passionate people that want to be with their kids. So um, I think this is a very challenging time for our staff to be at, at home and not have the contacts with their kids that they're used to. Um, so that's kind of what instruction looks like. Again, we're trying to provide a lot of a lot of choice and selection for our kids around some of the work that we were doing. And then moving forward, we're hoping out to pu push out some new learning experiences and we'll do virtual coaching with our teachers uh, to get that organized. Got it. Sounds like you've used these two weeks well as sort of a cushion to sort of slide into what's next. Um, I think so. That will be the plan to see what's working and see what we can learn throughout. Perfect. Anything else you want to share with us, Art? We're kind of coming up on our time here. Um, no, again, I appreciate the opportunity. And again, you know, I've got an amazing team, an amazing school board, all really supportive and a bunch of teachers that want to go above and beyond. And it's been good to be able to really meet and talk and, and, and discuss with my team. Um, and again, our goal really has been to meet the needs of our students and, and our families and our staff throughout this time. So I think we're off to a good start, but um, we're still learning a lot. So I've appreciated um, these types of opportunities to listen to what other people around the country are doing and, and learn from them as well. So thank you for this opportunity, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. And that was sort of the goal, right? And I think, you know, I've been very impressed with everybody I've talked with so far about how everybody's kind of rallying around the challenge. You know, educators step up when we need to. So it's pretty great. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, we're signing off with Community Consolidated School District 59, D59 in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Check out the hashtag D59Learns. Thanks so much, Art. Take care. All right. Thanks, Scott. Take care.